Hello everyone, my name is Ganesh Miraskar. Today we are going to discuss about building construction. In that we will see the first topic, uh, overview of building components and specifically we are going to study about the framed structures. So the course outcomes are to identify building components, to propose suitable type of foundation, to select suitable type of masonry, to propose relevant means of communication, to select the relevant materials of for the building finishes, to execute safe building practice. These are the course outcomes. And uh, as far as the typical RC frame building is concerned, we will see a plate like structure which is resting on this horizontal member and this member is resting on this vertical member and the vertical member is resting on this structure. So this plate like structure is known as slab, this horizontal member is known as beam, this vertical member is known as column and the column is resting on this foundation and the complete assembly is going to rest on the hard soil strata. So this is the typical RC frame building. So basic loads which are acting on the frame structure are dead load which is nothing but the self weight of members, live load which are moving loads for example students sitting in the classroom, wind load these are the loads which are generated due to wind pressure. So load transfer is from slab to beam, beam to column, column to foundation and the complete load total load is going to apply on the hard soil strata. So due to these loads certain actions are going to take place in the members. If the member is getting pushed that action is known as compression, if member is getting pulled that action is tension, if member bends that action is bending, if ends of the members are uh, gets tilted that is torsion, twisted sorry that action is known as torsion and due to the shear some portion is going to deflect in one direction and another is going to deflect in the another direction opposite direction. So as far as the materials are concerned RCC are the most generally used material for the frame structure. RCC is nothing but the combination of reinforcing steel and the concrete. So concrete is made up of, it's a combination of fine aggregate, coarse aggregate and cement. So cement is used as a binding material which consists of lime up to 60 to 65 percent, silica 17 to 25 percent, alumina 3 to 8 percent and other secondary components. So this is the typical picture of cement. The aggregates which are having size greater than 4.75 mm are known as coarse aggregate and if the size is less than 4.75 mm it is nothing but the fine aggregate. So depending upon the compressive strength requirement there are certain grades uh, of the concrete. For example for M20 the concrete mix proportion is 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 means one part of cement 1.5 parts of fine aggregate and three parts of coarse aggregate. So we all know that the concrete is strong in compression but weak in tension and steel is strong in compression as well as in tension. So where there are chances of tension, occurrence of tension, we are going to provide RCC steels. So again steel bars are of basically two types that is torque steel and mild steel. So depending upon the carbon content, if the steel is having low carbon content, that steel is having more ductility. Ductility means we are, it will provide sufficient amount of warning before failure. The failure will not be sudden. And the concrete is, uh, uh, we know that concrete is not going to provide any any kind of uh, any kind of warning before failure. Okay, next. If the beam is uh, simply resting on the support, that is known as simply supported beam. And if one end of the beam is fixed, that is known as a cantilever beam. So, due to the applied load, there are tension. Uh, there will occur a tension below the at the soffit or we can say that at the bottom fiber and compression at the top fiber and as in case of cantilever beam there will be tension at the top fiber and compression at the bottom fiber. We know that where tension where there is a tension we can go for the RCC supplement of reinforcement steel it is the reinforcement of steel this is the typical type of uh, flexural failure shear flexural cracks are there and due to shear there are shear cracks. So to take care about the shear we are going to provide the stirrups. These are the loop like structures of steel. Okay. And uh, if we are going to continue the reinforcement uh, by overlapping that is nothing but the splicing and this portion is known as lap length and due to anchorage effect to transfer this load from beam to member certain amount of additional length of steel is required embedded length. So this is known as development length. So this, it is required from uh, at the corner joint of beam column and as well as column foundation. So column foundation L type of additional length is provided is required for proper anchorage 
for the proper load distribution so again as far as slabs are concerned there are two types of slab one way slab if uh, the direction of deflection is in one direction we are going to say that the slab is one way slab if slab deflects in two direction slab is known as two way slab so main steel bars are go are required in parallel direction of short uh, longer span and again distribution bars are parallel to the shorter span and here in case of two way slab additional uh, so the reinforcing bars are provided in parallel to uh, longer and shorter span this is the one way slab this is the two way slab so lx upon ly if the ratio of lx upon ly is greater than 2 we can say that it is a one way slab if it is less than equal to 2 we can say that it is a two way slab then again the load distribution is uniform this half load is going to transfer on at this beam okay and here as far as two way slab is concerned so it will be for this beam the load distribution will be trapezoidal and here it will be triangular so this is typical view of one way slab and two way slab so if column is going to deflect in this manner load is in this direction and deflection is in perpendicular direction it is known as buckling so depending upon the length short column and uh, and the long column these are the classification of columns again to take care the bending or the buckling we would we require this longitudinal reinforcement and again to take care of or hold this reinforcement in position we require this ties okay as far as load bearing structure is concerned if the wall uh, is getting is carrying some load then we are going to provide a wall footing over this okay so it can be a simple strip or stepped footing to carry or to provide a footing for a single column we can go for isolated footing to support two columns one combined footing is provided we should provide combined footing okay if loads on these columns are identical or same we can go for rectangular combined footing if one of the column is carrying the greater load we can go for trapezoidal footing if number of columns are to be supported by a single flat slab a single slab this footing is known as mat footing or raft footing if two footings are to be connected by a beam which it is known as strap footing due to eccentric loading if the loading uh, if the column is near by the property line and is having the eccentric loading we can go for the strap beam as far as deep foundations are concerned so these are basically these foundations are shallow footings means depth by breadth ratio is less than 1 if depth is greater than that of the breadth that kind of footing is known as deep foundations so pile foundation is the best example of deep foundation here the load is going to transfer at the hard strata which is available at the at the much distance so again end bearing pile and friction pile these are the classification of pile foundation so depending upon the support reaction get, uh, which gets at the tip of the foundation that is the end bearing pile and if the reaction or the support reaction is or the load is balanced by the frictional force which is developed at this periphery of uh, foundation pile and the surrounding friction uh, surrounding soil it is known as friction pile again if the uplift pressure is acting on the structure due to air or water we are going we should have anchorage effect so that uh, hence for this purpose we are going to provide under rimmed pile foundation so this is the under rimmed pile foundation so there is a question of types of foundation so we can we can write all these things thank you very much